The next solo in my book is called Etude for Marimba. And this solo has a couple of different concepts in it. The first one is a mixed stroke concept. So we're gonna have one hand playing double verticals and one hand playing single independence. You've already done this, now we're just applying it to music. The first two bars has the double vertical stroke in the right hand with the single independent in the left hand. Then you very quickly have to do the exact opposite in measures three and four. So that the right hand now has the single independent and the left hand has the double vertical. Let me show you what these first four bars look like. The important thing with these first few bars is to really have independence between the strokes. You need to make sure the double vertical is moving in an up and down fashion with no rotation. You need to make sure the single independent is only rotating and is not using the arm to help create that rotation. Because your two hands are doing something different, they're going to want to influence each other and you need to make sure that you really keep them separate in these first four bars. You'll notice that this moves pretty quickly between your right hand playing double verticals and your left hand playing double verticals. You may need to play these first bars a few times before moving on. You can play bars one and two for a while and then move to three and four. And then you might wanna practice bar two moving to bar three so you understand how quick that needs to happen. Musically, you'll notice that you're gonna have a melody line and an accompaniment line in these first four bars. The single independent stroke is the melody. So when you start, you're probably gonna play mallet two a little bit stronger than your entire right hand. That's only one note compared to two notes, so the volume of the left hand might be a little bit higher. When you then switch so that the melody is in the right hand, you're gonna need to bring down the volume of the left hand. I always tell my students that not all notes are created equal, and it's really important for you to decide which note needs to be a little bit more prominent than the others in any musical passage. After these first four bars, you're gonna hear the same material coming back in bar five. I want you to play it at a little bit less of a dynamic so that it has kind of that echo effect. It is gonna be similar, but since we've already heard it before, it's kinda of nice to play it a little bit less. In these middle bars, you'll notice that the natural musical line moves up the keyboard. This really offers you a chance to do a crescendo. Often when we move up the keyboard, it's very natural to do a crescendo, and sometimes when we move down the keyboard, sometimes we do a decrescendo. Let me play the first half of this etude so you can hear these different musical concepts. As you get to the 2-4 in this etude, we're going to start including mallet 4 in some single independent strokes. So it would be good for you to play just the right hand at first. Both sticks are still going to do the rotation, but they're going to happen just a little bit quicker and your interval is only going to be at the interval of a third to start. This is what the right hand looks like by itself. Now that you're including mallet four, you really need to make sure it starts a little bit higher to prepare its stroke. As you play mallet three, that seems to be easy to get the stroke height a little higher, but you wanna make sure mallet four gets up there as well. Keep the intervals the same. You're not gonna to wanna to expand that interval just to include mallet four, or you're not gonna be ready for the next measure when you need to be on the A with mallet three. When you're playing single independent strokes with mallets three and four, it's often gonna be easier to play with your inner mallet. Mallet three is gonna be the stronger and probably louder sound you hear. So your ear needs to really help you correct that. It's often common for mallet four to barely make a sound and you're gonna to have to practice a higher stroke so that you can make that sound. 
Don't let your arm try and compensate and get a much bigger sound. It all happens with the rotation. You might play mallet three and notice how high it's coming off the keyboard and then play mallet four and make sure it looks like the same height. If it looks like the same height, it often is gonna sound the same. As you continue in the 2-4 section, you're gonna hear another echo effect. This time I add a double vertical in both hands instead of doing a single independent. It sounds very similar harmonically, so your ear will want to play it loud, but I'd really like to you to hear it as more of an echo, so I've written a much softer dynamic marking. Let me play this middle section for you so you can hear those dynamic contrasts. The last section adds mallet one at the very end. We're gonna get softer all the way to the end and we use a word niente, which means down to nothing. So you'll hear me play a dynamic that just keeps getting softer the whole time. I'm gonna add mallet one just on the lower notes. And again, just like we talked about the outer mallet four, you need to make sure mallet one speaks. It is getting softer, so it doesn't need to be loud, but it does need to have a presence comparable to what you're hearing in mallet two. You practice the same height and it looks the same, it's gonna sound the same as well. Let me demonstrate this ending section. When you first begin this etude, you're definitely going to want to start slow. But when you start slow, you'll feel each stroke a little bit more independently than when you play faster. That's okay at the slow tempo, but we want you to feel a little bit more flowing as you get faster. Let me demonstrate that. At the slow tempo, it's probably going to look and feel like this. I'm definitely feeling each individual stroke finish before I start the other one. As this gets faster, it's gonna feel more roll-like, it's gonna feel more fluid, and a little bit looser as you play this. It's gonna sound a little bit like this. As you're working on getting that loose sound, you wanna make sure it's not loose in the grip. You don't want to hear flams. Both these strokes should hit at the same time. And so you want to make sure that you keep a really firm grip while you're working on kind of a fluid wrist motion. Now I'll go ahead and play the entire etude for you. As you play this etude, make sure you have fun with it. We do a lot of exercises to build a foundation, but the exercises are only a tool to help us make music. Make sure you have those great dynamic contrasts which help you create different emotions, maybe different thoughts in your head. That is the whole point of doing the hard work, so that you really get to enjoy yourself playing some music on the marimba.